humans have looked up at the sky and wondered at the stars ever since the ancestors uh, that ultimately gave rise to the human race uh, were here. The stars, the skies just excite humans uh, intrinsically. Children grow up fascinated by the stars. But all that we see uh, in the stars with our eyes is light. That's electromagnetic waves oscillating electric and magnetic fields that oscillate just at a certain frequency uh, regions of oscillation. And there's ever so much more in information about the stars and about the things out in space that comes from other wavelength bands of electromagnetic waves. Uh, and so we now have this uh, astronomy done with light, with x-rays, with radio waves, with gamma rays, with ultraviolet light, and many different bands of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, this astronomy has all been created with these other frequency bands in my lifetime. But the laws of physics say that there are actually two kinds of waves that can be created in the distant universe and travel to Earth bringing us information about what's out there. The electromagnetic waves, which is what we've always used up until now, and gravitational waves. They're the only other kind of wave that we have for exploring the universe. And the gravitational waves, we, as we understand them, are going to bring us very different kinds of information about the universe that uh, you could never see with electromagnetic waves. For example, gravitational waves created at the very birth of the universe should be travel unscathed through all of the hot matter of the early universe as the universe is very hot and expanding. And they don't scatter, they don't get absorbed, they bring the information from the birth of the universe to us today. But electromagnetic waves they don't come from there. They, they got absorbed, they scattered, they lost their information. Electromagnetic waves, you can't see the beginning of the universe. When black holes collide, they produce gravitational waves. They produce no electromagnetic waves at all. So if you want to see colliding black holes, you can only see them with gravitational waves. If you want to see the birth of the universe, you can only see it with gravitational waves. It's a whole new way to explore the universe and to explore things that you can't see in any other ma manner. The results outperform your expectations? Uh, the, uh, so my, ex my expectations for LIGO were very high. And I wouldn't say that, they have out, that the results have outperformed them. They have, in fact, been about what I expected. And uh, it is quite, quite remarkable that already in the uh, early 1980s, it seemed clear to me that the first thing we would see would be colliding black holes. And uh, it seemed also clear to me that we really needed to uh, have a capability to simulate colliding black holes in order to understand the signals well enough in order to be able to analyze the data. And so uh, I think perhaps my biggest contribution was making sure that that that, that, that happened. And uh, here we are. We're now seeing with uh, the current data run, the fourth data run with advanced LIGO, we're seeing a pair of black holes collide approximately once every other day. And it's just fantastic. It's wonderful. And the science that's coming off in terms of beginning to understand where these black, black hole binaries came from, beginning to uh, uh, test, testing general relativity with ultra high precision, uh, these are what I was expecting to happen. So for, for the younger generation, they were euphoric when gravitational waves were discovered, and I think they're euphoric over the science that's coming out. I just have a sense of profound satisfaction that, that the vision that I uh, was having in the 1970s and 80s came true. I, I mean, I, I just sit back and just feel a great warmth. <laughs> that's all, a great warmth that, that it is really happening more or less the way I expected. What do you think will be confirmed in the next, say, decade or two? Well, I think that one of the most important things to me, testing uh, general relativity in the regime where space-time is highly disturbed, uh, oscillating rapidly with large amplitudes, that's the regime of the black hole collisions which in essence uh, create a storm in the fabric or the shape of space and the rate of flow of time. And uh, seeing that pinned down, that, uh, that, that the gravitational waves are just what you would expect from that space-time storm uh, is, is the most exciting thing to me. Now, 
to my disappointment, this is one, my one disappointment, is that most of the waves from the most violent part of the storm go down the black hole, go down the final black hole and don't come out to us. And so what I'm hoping for is that we uh, see uh, more details, we get to higher precision, and also we see final black holes with larger spins when we get enough data that we do begin to see more of the uh, gravitational waves coming from the violent part of the space-time storm than, than what we've been seeing. Can you briefly explain how time travel might happen? <laughs> so let me begin by saying that uh, we have fairly strong evidence, but no proof by any means, that the laws of physics prevent backward time travel from happening on the scale, at least, of, of, uh, of humans. Uh, I think it's fairly likely that it happens on subatomic scales, but uh, we haven't been able to prove that that's the case. And so let me just describe the way that was first introduced, I think, in a, a, a paper I wrote with students in the 1980s. You have a, a wormhole, it has two mouths. One mouth stays here uh, in this room. I give the other mouth to my wife and she has very advanced technology and so she uh, rides this very rapid spacecraft out uh, for about, say, a year out at nearly the speed of light and then comes back. And so two years have elapsed as seen by her, but as seen by me, 50 years have elapsed. So I am really old by the time I come back. But, that, but if we hold hands through the wormhole uh, just looking, she looks at my watch, I look at hers, There's, they have to tick at the same rate. That seems pretty obvious, and it is the case. It, it seems through the wormhole, both mouths have aged uh, by two years, but as seen through the external universe, my mouth has aged by 50 years. So if you then puzzle that out in your mind, you can figure out if with her back now, and her wormhole there and my wormhole here, all I have to do is go over go into her wormhole mouth and I'll go back in time by 50 years uh, when I go through the wormhole. But you have to think about it for a while to convince yourself that that's the case. Uh, let me just say that this is all explained ever so much better in terms of poetry, verse, in a book of uh, paintings and poetry that I have in press that will be published on Halloween this year. It's called The Warped Side of the Universe. The paintings are by Leah Halloran, a superb young painter. This is my attempts at verse. And if you really want to see this described really nicely, go read my book when it comes out. Uh, if, if you like poetry, if you enjoy paintings, this is, I think, a, the best description of this that, that I have seen. Of course, I'm prejudiced. How important to the field of astrophysics is confirming the existence of it, it, confirming the existence of gravitational waves is very important for fundamental physics. Uh, the Einstein's laws of general relativity demand gravitational waves should exist. If they didn't exist, uh, then uh, something is really badly wrong with our understanding of the fundamental laws of physics. And so confirming existence uh, is a it tells us that general relativity is really on the right track and uh, the detailed experiments that have, observations that have been done uh, by LIGO primarily up, up until now show that that's true to very high precision. Uh, confirming existence of gravitational waves for astrophysics, the uh, importance is simply the uh, payoff in terms of observational astronomy over the coming decades and centuries. Uh, if you uh, think back uh, to the time of Galileo, that's 400 years ago roughly, uh, he pointed his optical telescope at uh, Jupiter, discovered Jupiter's four large moons, and created, began instrument-based electromagnetic astronomy. And look at where we are now. How, what a radical revolution in our understanding of the universe has come from those instruments with electromagnetic waves since the time of Galileo. Gravitational waves, now confirmed to exist, uh, are the foundation uh, by themselves and in uh, collaboration with electromagnetic waves through what we call multi-messenger astronomy. They're the foundation for the future of astronomy and several centuries from now when our uh, descendants look back on this era, 
Uh, I think they're going to say that one of the great contributions that uh, uh, we gave to them is our uh, understanding of the universe through gravitational waves and electromagnetic waves working together.